Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is sterilization overkill methods. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Check out the status bar below for our agenda. Stick around to the end for our bonus questions. Our topic, sterilization overkill methods, is covered by 1345 section 7.5.6 and 7.5.7. .7. There is a corresponding ISO standard, 11135-1, Sterilization of Healthcare Products, Ethylene Oxide, Part 1. Requirements for the development, validation, and control of routine sterilization processes for medical devices. Overkill sterilization in five words. Sterility assurance, double sterilization time. The definition of overkill is a sterilization process that demonstrates a 12 spore log reduction in the biological indicator, having a resistance greater than or equal to the bio burden of the product. As we analyze any sterilization process, we're mainly looking at the concentration of the sterilant and the exposure time. The sterilant in most cases will be either steam, heat, ethylene oxide, radiation, or some other form of sterilate that's applied to the product. Then you have the exposure time. The exposure time is that length of time that the chemical sterilant or the sterilant itself is allowed to basically sterilize the product itself. Most sterilization processes are based on an assumption that the product will have 1 million colony forming units on the product and all of those must be killed. What we're going to do then is we are going to apply our sterilant to the product for enough time to go from 1 million colony forming units down to zero. This is where the overkill comes in because that amount of time to go from 1 million to zero, we will then double that amount of time. Take for example, if I have a product that it takes 20 minutes to go from 1 million colony forming units down to zero, well then if I double my sterilization time to 40 minutes, then theoretically I would have negative 10 to the minus six or negative 1 million colony forming units on that product. This gets into probability, it gets into statistics. There is a curve that is made that highlights this and this is how we get to the overkill method. Once we show our sterilization process can take our product from a million colony forming units down to zero in 20 minutes, and then we run it an extra 20 minutes, we test our product, we test our BIs, and we show that there are no positive BIs. At this point, we can assign a sterility assurance level of 10 to the minus six to our product. We have shown a 12 log reduction. It's important to remember that we have to show that our medical device is still safe and effective after our sterilization process. I am dramatically simplifying this overkill method for this example. If you want more information, I suggest that you talk to a subject matter expert. So how do I know this is working? Well, first I utilize the overkill method for my sterilization and it's in line with ISO standards. Second, all of the math and the supporting rationale for my overkill method, it's documented, it's captured, it's part of the process validation for the sterilization process. And then finally, I maintain that sterilization process. And I also maintain all of my other supporting systems, bio burden monitoring, dose, audit, dose audits, or whatever they are for my selected sterilization process. So how do I know this is not working? First, my process doesn't utilize the overkill methods and it's not according to the ISO standards. Second, I cannot demonstrate that my product meets the SAL of 10 to the minus six. I don't have the data, I didn't do the validation, I can't support it. And then finally, my actual sterilization process that's not validated, and I don't know what my log reduction, my spore log reduction is for my process. And now for those three bonus questions. Can you explain how we determine the sterility assurance level for our products? Second, do we have any products that have a sterility assurance level that's not 10 to the minus six? If yes, what are those? And then finally, who's responsible for the sterilization validation and capturing all of the documentation and holding that documentation? Thank you for watching.
please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained, making quality systems simple for you.